Mrs. Mango. And I'm Mr. Vogel. And welcome to Bible Jump. We are so glad you're here. We miss you guys so very much. And uh, what, what's that? This is my mask. Ooh, I like this game. Good guys, bad guys. Let's mm -mm, No, ma'am. No? Why are no. you wearing a mask, Mr. Vogel? Well, we're seeing this as one of the rules to keep people safe. Wait, I have a mask too. Look, boys and girls, but this is called the shoe phone. Watch this. I put it up like this, and it helps me to be safe. It kind of helps me to start following some of these new rules we're seeing out there, but I don't know, Mr. Vogel. I don't think I like this change very much. There is a lot of change going on, but one thing to remember, Jesus is there for you, and God always keeps his promises. God does always keep his promises. In fact, I think I'm ready to hear more about the story. Well, the story has something to do with a scepter or a wand like this that kings and queens would use as rules hundreds of years ago. Rules? I have rules in my house. Do you have rules in your house, Mr. Vogel? For sure. As a matter of fact, when we follow rules, this is how we obey authorities. That shows respect. Respect is one of our three R's. Let's say them together. Reverence, respect, and regard. In today's Bible story, the king had a scepter that he'd have to put out. And if you weren't invited, you would be punished. Rules. This is very interesting. In fact, in today's Bible story, we're going to hear about Esther. And she had to follow some rules. In fact, she wanted to see the king. But there was rules, and she had to be invited to approach him. So let's watch that video and learn more about Esther. Hey boys and girls, I'm Megan, and this is Jesse. Hi. Jesse, you seem a little sad. Is something wrong? Yes. I was supposed to go to my grandma's house today to bake cookies, but my grandma is sick now, so I can't go. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, Jesse. I'm sad my grandma is sick, but I'm also sad because we have been planning to bake cookies for a long time. Grandma even got Koala Karate Squad cookie cutters. Oh, uh, I, I know it's hard. Sometimes our plans don't happen. But do you know whose plans always happen? Whose? God's. In today's Bible story, someone made an evil plan that could have stopped God's plan to send Jesus. But God was in control. Nothing can stop his plan. Listen to the story. Some of God's people were in a land called Persia. Persia was ruled by King Ahasuerus. The king chose Esther to be his queen. Esther was one of God's people who were called Jews because they were from the land of Judah. Esther did not tell the king that she was a Jew. One day, Esther's cousin Mordecai heard some bad news. Haman, one of the king's leaders, had a very evil plan to destroy the Jews. Mordecai was scared. Mordecai was a Jew. He did not want his family and friends to be killed. Mordecai and all the Jews cried. Esther saw that the Jews were upset. Why are you crying? Esther asked. She sent someone to ask Mordecai what was wrong. Mordecai told the messenger about Haman's evil plan. Mordecai said, ask the king to stop Haman. Ask him to save us. Esther wanted to help her people, 
But the king had a rule. No one can go to the king unless the king asks that person to come first. If anyone broke the rule, the punishment was death. The only way to not be punished was if the king held out his scepter. That meant you may live. Esther was afraid. Mordecai reminded Esther that she was a Jew. Maybe Esther had become the queen just for this time, so she could save her people. Esther asked all the Jews to not eat or drink for three days. Then Esther went to the king. He saw Esther and held out his scepter. That meant she would live. What can I do for you? The king asked. I will give you anything, up to half the kingdom. Esther asked the king and Haman to come to a feast. When they were done eating, the king said, What can I do for you? I will give you anything, up to half the kingdom. Esther said, Come to my feast tomorrow. The next day, the king and Haman went to Esther's feast. When they were done eating, the king said, What can I do for you? I will give you anything, up to half the kingdom. Esther said, There is a plan to kill me and my people. Who made that plan? The king asked. This evil man, Haman, Esther said. The king was angry. He ordered Haman to be taken away. Then the king made a law to keep the Jews safe from their enemies. God's plan was to send the Messiah into the world through Abraham's family. Haman's evil plan could not stop God. God had a plan for Esther to rescue his people. By saving the Jews, God made the way for his son Jesus to come into the world. Wow, that was a great video about Esther, Mr. Vogel. What did you think? I think so. God had a plan for Jesus, and even evil Haman couldn't stop it. God's plan was to use Esther to rescue her people, Ooh. the Jews, and Jesus would be born into the world to save us. That reminds me of our memory verse. Have you been practicing this week? Well, Mr. Vogel, I have trouble with memory verses sometimes. Can I say it with you? Yes. Okay, I think I'm ready. That, that Christ, Christ died, died for our, our sins in accordance with the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised in the third day in accordance with the scriptures. 1 Corinthians 15, 3b and 4. There's a word in there I'm confused about. What is, what's the word scripture again? Scripture is just God's word. The Bible? Yes, the Bible. The B-I-B-L-E. Yes, that's the book for me. That's right, and it I tells us, it. yes, that Jesus died and he rose again because he loved us so much. That was God's plan to save us. God's plan can't be stopped and he has a plan for everything. For everything? For everything. Remember, boys and girls, God does have a plan for everything. So even if these times seem a little bit strange or a little bit scary, God's not surprised. He knows what's going on. He has a plan for everything. And Mr. Vogel, he always keeps his promises. See you next week. Bye. Bye. -bye.